Now, perhaps the best way to learn any concept in mathematics is to work a problem. You don't even have to solve that problem. Just give a genuine attempt at that problem that covers that concept that you're trying to learn. So let's do that with this concept. So we're going to make the following claim, and we're going to try to prove that claim. So we're going to kind of give ourselves a problem here. So claim, claim, if P is the limit point of a set S, then this implies that S is infinite. That is to say that S has an infinite number of elements. Now, by proving this claim, we're going to get a much better feel, much better than going over the definition, much better than maybe even writing or drawing a kind of pictorial representation. We're going to get, we're going to really make greater strides in understanding what a limit point is by working through this problem and by trying to prove, that is to say, by trying to prove this statement. So oftentimes, when you can't, when a direct proof doesn't come directly to mind, it's oftentimes helpful to kind of toy around with trying to prove this by contradiction. So let's do that. Let's do that. So suppose, suppose S is not infinite. That is to say that S is finite. So that is to say that S is finite. So remember, if S is finite, then that means that S is countable. Let's keep that in the back of our minds for a second. But let's let's kind of toy around with a little toy example. I, I said earlier that one of the best ways to learn mathematics, to learn a concept of mathematics, is to work a problem going over that concept of mathematics. And one of the best ways to solve problems, or a very good tool for problem solving, is to have a toy example. So let's have a toy example. Let's have a toy example of a finite set. And let's consider what a, if that finite set had a limit point, then what would that look like? What would that feel like? So let's consider the finite set. We'll call it P for play, because we're playing around with this example. So let's consider the set P, which is equal to the set 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is a subset of the real numbers. So let me, let's draw out this set on the real number line that I've drawn here. So let's draw out 1, 2, 3, and 4. And let's consider any point in the real numbers. And let's consider if that, let's try to make that point. Let's try to force that point to be a limit point of this set. So if I had a point, say, right here. And let's try to make this a limit point. Well, remember, if, if, if this point is a limit point, then that means, if that point's a limit point, so that means that every open ball centered at that point contains some Q in our set S where Q is not equal to the point that is the center of the open ball. But look at this. I'm able to break that rule because I'm able to find an open ball. Remember the open balls in the real, on the real numbers. The open balls in the real numbers and the metric space defined on the real numbers, that is, are the open intervals. The open intervals. So I'm able to find, check this out, I'm able to find an open ball centered at this point that contains no other points in my set P. And I can do this with any point. I claim that I can do this with any point in R. Because check this out, let's see if I chose this point. I'm able to find an open ball centered at that point. I'm able to find an open ball centered at that point that contains no other points P, no other points in our set P, but and that is to say, no other points in our set P that are not equal to the center of this open ball. So there, of course, there is a point in this set P that's in this open ball, namely four. But remember, if P, if this point four is a limit point, then it has to contain some Q and S where Q is not equal to the center of the open ball. So remember, we're trying to to follow the chain of logic that starts with S is finite, given that P is the limit point of S. And we're trying to, to show that that chain of logic ends in a contradiction. So let's see if we can use what we learned in this play example 
to make our chain of logic so that it ends in the contradiction. So, let's start with s is finite. So what does that imply about s? Well, that means that s has a finite number of elements. So we can say that s has n elements for some n in the natural numbers. So, say s is equal to the set, for instance, so say s is equal to the set s1, s2, and so on, because s has n elements, so it ha must have some s1, s2, and so on, all the way up to sn. We can, we can call those elements, and they're uh, generally these elements, s1, s2, and so on. So notice the trick that we used in a little toy example. If I took a point in the real numbers, say that, say that we took the point 1, so let's, if I took the point a naught in the real numbers, then check out what happened. If my goal, my goal was to show that this point was not a limit point of our set P. Of course, I, 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 I noticed here I, I'm kind of confusing. This is capital P, and this is this P that is the limit point of S. This is a lowercase p. That is a little confusing. I should have named this something different, but let's just go with it. So if I chose a point A0 and R, so let's try say I chose a point 1 here, then if I considered the point in P not equal to A0, so in case we can exclude one here, if I chose the point in P, in, the, in our case, two, three, or four, closest to one, so closest to our A naught in general, and I found a radius of an open ball centered at our A naught, smaller, smaller than the distance from one and the closest point to one, so two in, our, in this case, and I found a radius of an open ball smaller than that distance, then that was, in fact, the open ball that solidified the fact that 1 was not a limit point of the set P, because this open ball doesn't contain any points in the set P besides 1 itself, so therefore 1 cannot possibly be a limit point of the set P. So, let's try to generalize this notion here. Well, check this out. It's easy to say it's easy to see that that the closest point to 1 is in fact 2 and then therefore we can take the distance a distance smaller than the distance from 1 to 2 and make an open ball of that radius but in general if we want to do that for the set s then we have to consider all of the distances we have to consider all of the distances from the point p to each point in s and find the smallest of those distances and the smallest of those distances would in fact be the distance from P to whatever that point is that's the smallest distance from P to, to any point in S and therefore we would find the closest point to P that is not P itself in the set S. So we need to be more careful here. We need to consider the set of distances from P to points in S that are distinct from P. So P from S1 the distance from P to S2, and so on, all the way up to the, the distance from P to S in. But if, if there's a distance in here that's equal to zero, then we just take it out. Because if that distance is equal to zero, then that means the point that we're taking the distance from P, so the, that means that that distance is a distance from P to some point in S where that point in S is equal to P. So minus the distance from P to P if it exists. If it exists. Okay, that's just a, a quick... So, so in this case, the set, this set for our Tor example, I'll call this set T0 and I'll call this set T. So T0 in our Tor example would be the distance from... 1 to 1, the distance from 1 to 2, the distance from 1 to 3, and the distance from 1 to 4, minus the set containing the distance from 1 to 1, because 1 is not distinct from 1. Okay, so now that we have that on our belt, we're, again, we're, to be clear, we're taking the distances of the points in S distinct from P to P. So the distances from P to the points in S, all the distances from the, from the point P to all the points in S that are distinct from P. 
Okay. And check this out. If I take the minimum, if I take the minimum of t and let r, let r, a radius, a radius of our open ball, equal that minimum. Again, we're trying to trying the same trick that we did in this toy example and seeing if it works for our general the general case. If we let r equal the minimum of t, then check out what happens. So in this case, the minimum of t naught is equal to the distance from one to two. So if I let r equal the minimum of t here, and then so check this out. Take take the open ball centered centered at p with radius smaller than r. So remember, since p is a limit point, since p is a limit point, by definition of a limit point, this implies that there exists a q in that open ball, a q in, our, in that open ball I'll call b, p, and with radius r, q in the open ball centered at p with radius r, or with radius, I should say, smaller than r, so there's a, there exists a point Q in that open ball with center P and radius smaller than R such that Q is not equal to P. But look at this. And, and moreover, the Q is in S. Q must be in S. Remember, by definition of a limit point, there must exist for each open ball centered at P, there must exist a Q not equal to P such that Q is in the set S of which P is a limit point. So remember, P is a limit point of S. So therefore, there must exist for each open ball centered at P a point Q and S that's not equal to P. So, but check this out. This implies, this implies that the distance between P and Q must be in the set T. But look at this, look at this. This distance, this distance between P and Q is less than R. And R is equal to the minimum of T. Because, because Q is in the open ball centered at P with radius strictly less than R, then therefore, here's our, here's our open ball, and here's our radius, even if the radius was R. If I took a point Q in this open ball, then that, the distance from P to Q, this is our point P, and this is our point Q, the distance from P to Q must be strictly less than R by definition of an open ball. So therefore, this distance from P to Q must be strictly less than R. But r is equal to the minimum of t. And don't you see how this is a contradiction? Check this out. I've just found a point. Remember, the distance between p and q. q is a point in s that's distinct from p. And therefore, the distance from p to q must be in this set t. But check this out. I found a point in this set t that is smaller than the minimum of t. I can't have a set of real numbers and then have a... Um, element in that set of real numbers that is smaller than the minimum of that set if the minimum in fact exists of that set. But check, yeah, I can't have a point in a set that has a minimum. I can't have a point in a set that has a minimum that is smaller than that minimum. That's a contradiction. So therefore, I found a point in T that is smaller than the minimum of T. That's impossible. That's impossible. Therefore, we've arrived at a contradiction. Th that is, if we were to suppose that S is finite, we would arrive at a contradiction. Therefore, S must be infinite.